Greetings, fellow curious minds. Today we're going to delve into the fascinating life of Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa was the wealthiest person in history, and we're going to find out how he got there. Mansa Musa was the ruler of the Mali Empire, located in what is now West Africa. But he wasn't just any ruler. He was the kind of guy who had so much gold that he made Scrooge McDuck look like a penny pincher. And we're not talking about a few gold coins here and there. We're talking about so much gold that he caused inflation wherever he went. That's right, folks. Mansa Musa was the OG influencer. He could walk into a market and throw around so much cash that the price of goods would skyrocket for months afterward. But Mansa Musa wasn't just about showing off his bling. He was also a devout Muslim and made a pilgrimage to Mecca in 1324. And when I say pilgrimage, I mean the kind of pilgrimage that puts a European backpacking trip to shame. He traveled with a caravan of thousands of people, including soldiers, scholars, and slaves. And he didn't just travel light. He brought so much gold with him that he had to hire a team of camels just to carry it all. Can you imagine being that rich? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't come to your party tonight. I have to go hire some camels to carry my gold. But Mansa Musa wasn't all about showing off his wealth. He was also a patron of Islam and built numerous mosques and madrasas or Islamic schools. He was a true leader, both in his empire and in the wider Islamic world. So, get ready to take a journey back in time to the days of camels, gold, and Islamic scholarship. Mansa Musa's story is one for the books, and we're about to uncover all the juicy details. Mansa Musa was born into a wealthy family in the year 1280. His father was the ruler of the Mali Empire, which at the time was one of the wealthiest and most powerful empires in West Africa. Mansa Musa was not the firstborn son, but his intelligence and charm quickly made him a favorite of his father and the people of the empire. As a child, Mansa Musa was educated in the ways of Islam and was trained in subjects such as law, history, and administration. He was a quick learner and showed a great deal of promise from an early age. However, his path to the throne was not without its challenges. When Mansa Musa's father died in 1312, the empire was in a state of turmoil. There were several contenders for the throne, and it was not immediately clear who would succeed the previous ruler. Mansa Musa's older brother was initially chosen to be the next ruler, but he proved to be an ineffective leader and was eventually overthrown by Mansa Musa himself. Now let's be real. Overthrowing your own brother to become ruler of an empire is not exactly the most honorable thing to do. But in Mansa Musa's defense, he did it with style. He gathered a group of loyal followers and staged a successful coup, declaring himself the new ruler of the Mali Empire. It's like something out of Game of Thrones, only with less incest and more gold. As soon as he took the throne, Mansa Musa set about consolidating his power and expanding the empire's territory. He was a savvy leader and quickly realized that the key to success was controlling the empire's vast resources, particularly its gold mines. He also developed a strong military and established trade relationships with neighboring kingdoms. But Mansa Musa wasn't just a conqueror. He was also a wise and just ruler. He implemented reforms that helped to improve the lives of his people, such as reducing taxes and promoting education. He also established a system of justice that was based on Islamic law, which helped to bring stability to the empire. It wasn't all smooth sailing, though. Mansa Musa faced several challenges during his reign, including rebellions from within the empire and attacks from neighboring kingdoms. But he was a skilled diplomat and was able to negotiate peace treaties that helped to maintain stability in the region. Overall, Mansa Musa's rise to power was a testament to his intelligence, charisma, and leadership skills. He wasn't afraid to take risks and make bold moves to achieve his goals, but he also had a deep sense of responsibility to his people. And let's be real, he also had a pretty sweet crown. Seriously, have you seen it? It's like something out of a superhero movie. Mansa Musa's early life and rise to power were marked by ambition, skill, and a little bit of intrigue. He was a leader who knew how to get things done, but he also had a heart for his people, and he looked pretty cool while doing it. First off, let's put things into perspective. Mansa Musa wasn't just rich, he was... I could buy a small country and still have enough left over for a cappuccino rich. According to some estimates, Mansa Musa's net worth was around $400 billion in today's dollars. That's more than Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and Elon Musk combined. And let's be honest, 
they don't have nearly as cool of a name as Mansa Musa. So how did Mansa Musa become so wealthy? Well, for starters, the Mali Empire controlled several important trade routes, including those that carried gold and salt. And we all know that gold is the ultimate flex. It's like wearing a diamond-encrusted watch, only better. Mansa Musa had access to vast gold mines and was able to control the flow of gold into and out of the empire. He also established strong trade relationships with neighboring kingdoms, which helped to increase his wealth even further. But Mansa Musa wasn't content to just sit on his piles of gold like a dragon. No, he was a generous leader who wanted to use his wealth to benefit his people and spread the word of Islam. And that's where his famous pilgrimage to Mecca comes in. In 1324, Mansa Musa set out on a journey to Mecca, the holiest city in Islam. But this wasn't just any pilgrimage. Mansa Musa traveled with a caravan of thousands of people, including soldiers, scholars, and slaves. He brought with him a staggering amount of gold, estimated to be around 60,000 pounds. And he didn't just bring the gold for show. Mansa Musa distributed it along the way, giving away so much that he caused inflation wherever he went. Now let's be real. If you or I were to give away a few thousand dollars on a trip, we'd feel pretty good about ourselves. But Mansa Musa wasn't satisfied with just giving away a few bucks. He gave away so much gold that he's still considered one of the most generous people in history. And he did it all while wearing a fancy robe and turban. Talk about making an entrance. But Mansa Musa's generosity wasn't just for show. He was a devout Muslim who wanted to use his wealth to spread the word of Islam. He built numerous mosques and madrasas along the way, and he hired Islamic scholars to teach and spread the message of the religion. He also made significant donations to Islamic centers of learning, such as the University of Sankori in Timbuktu. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage to Mecca wasn't just about giving away gold and spreading Islam, though. It was also a way for him to show off the wealth and power of the Mali Empire. He traveled with a massive entourage, including musicians, dancers, and slaves. He brought with him exotic animals, such as camels and horses. He even brought a caravan of 80 camels just to carry his clothes. Because why carry your own clothes when you can hire a team of camels to do it for you? But Mansa Musa's pilgrimage wasn't just a display of wealth. It was also a way for him to establish diplomatic relationships with other Islamic leaders and kingdoms. He met with the rulers of Egypt, Arabia, and other regions along the way, and he exchanged gifts with them as a sign of goodwill. He also established trade relationships with these kingdoms, which helped to further increase his wealth and influence. But Mansa Musa's generosity and showmanship had unintended consequences as well. When he passed through Egypt, for example, he gave away so much gold that he caused a temporary economic crisis in the region. Prices for goods skyrocketed, and the economy was thrown into chaos. Mansa Musa was probably thinking, oops, my bad, but the people of Egypt were probably thinking, thanks for nothing, rich guy. Despite these unintended consequences, Mansa Musa's pilgrimage was a major event in the history of Islam in West Africa. It helped to spread the religion throughout the region and establish the Mali Empire as a major player on the world stage, and it cemented Mansa Musa's reputation as one of the most generous and powerful leaders of his time. After Mansa Musa's pilgrimage to Mecca, his reputation as a wealthy and powerful leader only grew stronger. He was now known throughout the Islamic world and beyond as a generous patron of the religion, a savvy diplomat, and a shrewd businessman. But Mansa Musa's wealth wasn't just a source of pride and prestige, it was also a burden. He had to constantly manage and protect his vast resources, and he had to navigate the complex political and economic landscape of West Africa. He faced many challenges during his reign, including rebellions, attacks from neighboring kingdoms, and the constant threat of internal unrest. Despite these challenges, Mansa Musa remained a strong and effective leader throughout his reign. He continued to expand the Mali Empire's territory and influence, and he supported the growth of Islamic culture and scholarship in the region. He built numerous mosques and madrasas, and he supported the study of the Quran and other Islamic texts. He also established Timbuktu as a major center of Islamic learning and culture. But Mansa Musa's reign was not without its flaws. He was a strict ruler who enforced Islamic law throughout the empire, which could be harsh and unforgiving at times. He also had a tendency to favor certain groups over others, particularly those who were loyal to him personally. Despite these flaws, 
Mansa Musa remains an important and inspirational figure in the history of Africa and the Islamic world. He was a leader who used his wealth and power to benefit his people and promote the growth of Islam. He was a visionary who saw the potential of his empire and worked tirelessly to expand its influence and reach. And he was a symbol of the richness and diversity of Africa's cultural heritage, which continues to inspire and captivate people around the world. Mansa Musa's reign ended with his death in 1337. He was succeeded by his son, Mansa Maga. Mansa Maga faced many challenges during his reign, including rebellions and attacks from neighboring kingdoms. He was not as effective a leader as his father, and the Mali Empire began to decline under his rule. In the years following Mansa Musa's death, the empire faced a series of internal and external challenges, including droughts, rebellions, and attacks from neighboring kingdoms. The empire's resources were depleted, and its power and influence waned. By the 16th century, the Mali Empire had effectively ceased to exist as a political entity, and its people had been absorbed into other kingdoms and empires in the region. Despite the decline of the Mali Empire, Mansa Musa's legacy continued to inspire and influence people in West Africa and beyond. He was remembered as a wise and just ruler who used his wealth and power to benefit his people and promote the growth of Islam. His pilgrimage to Mecca remains one of the most famous and legendary journeys in history, and his reputation as one of the wealthiest people of all time continues to captivate people's imaginations. In the end, Mansa Musa's reign may have come to an end, but his legacy lives on, reminding us of the power and potential of great leadership, the richness of Africa's cultural heritage, and the importance of generosity, diplomacy, and wisdom in shaping the course of history.